What is up everybody, it's The Don with The Don Tech, and today I wanted to go ahead and do an unboxing and review of the Corsair RM650X power supply. And instead of showing you how to install it inside of a machine or anything like that, I wanted to go over some of the things that make a power supply a vital component in your computer that you need to make sure you're paying careful attention to when you buy it. So getting started on the outside here, you know, anything else you're going to see on the typical, uh, you know, stuff of a box. It's going to tell you the specifications, 10 year warranty, which is very important, um, 80 plus gold rating, what series it has, if it's fully modular or not, like this one is completely modular as you can see, and then if it's going to be completely low noise. So this one has a fan that does not spin whatsoever when you're actually running it under low enough load. So getting into it itself, you have the actual Corsair logo box with a little piece of tape there that you're going to want to make sure is cut, so that way, obviously, you can open it. Inside, you've got the manual, which you don't need, warranty guide, which might be useful, power cable, which is also useful, zip ties, and a badge and screws, useful, silica gel, not useful, but don't let your kids get that or your pet. Moving on, you've got the primary uh, parts that you're looking for here, which is going to be the power supply and the bag of accessories and cables. The power supply comes in this nifty little Velcro sort of bag, and it's something that, I don't know, I've never used them before afterwards, like after I've replaced power supply, I never use them. Sometimes you can put the cables in them, it's a little bit better of a feel, um, and it just, you know, closes like that, so it's kind of a, it's a bag, I don't know, do what you want to do with the bag, I guess. And then you've got the actual cables themselves. And the cables themselves come in a nifty little Velcro pouch, yada yada. And you have everything that you would need to connect everything. You've got SATA power, you've got the CPU power and the ATX power. You've got uh, PCI Express for your video cards, another SATA power and Molex. And the thing that converts Molex to a four pin power adapter. Usually you see those on like floppy drives or fan controllers or something like that. So the cables themselves, uh, they're great for standard builds and you're not gonna have any problems with them. But if you wanna go for an overall better feel, I recommend picking up the actual custom cables themselves from Corsair or Cable Mod or something like that. Now we move on to the actual part itself, the power supply. And this power supply is a very nice power supply in the fact that it's not too large, it's not too compact, and it's not going to be overbearing on the system or electric bill or anything like that. Uh, this machine does come with a warning that will tell you uh, silent operation at low to moderate loads. So that just means this fan in here is not going to spin unless you have a significant load on your system. That's going to help reduce the whine that you get, it's going to reduce the overall noise, and it's just going to help the system just maintain the longevity because your fan will only run when it needs to run. And this also has a cool little feature that more power supplies are doing now, but you can install this you know, with the fan facing up, or if you do it with the fan facing down, uh, depending on how your case is configured, you, know, you have that logo that is gonna show up straight no matter which orientation you install it in. So that's always nice. Now if you install it obviously this way or something, then it doesn't really matter. And you're probably not gonna install it this way just because I don't think I've seen a case that really does that. This is a fully modular power supply. So you have every single cable that you have to plug in yourself. And that's something that's really, really cool for cable management and something that gives it a better professional look. As well as you can see that it's not actually cornered around the edges, it's kind of smoothed off and everything. So it has a really nice premium feel to it, while not being too heavy or too large as well. Since this is the 650 watt variant, we're not actually going to be looking at an extended power supply that you see in some of the 750 or larger watt variants. So my overall review and verdict of this is going to be that it's a definite must buy if you're looking into the into getting a good power supply. On sale, you can get this as inexpensively as $89, but on average, it might be anywhere from $100 to $110 uh, to buy this power supply. But it's a great power supply. It's gold rated. It has great efficiency. It has the no fan spin. It's fully modular, 
and it's a great compact size. So having said all that, I wanted to talk about a couple of more things in regards to power supplies. Uh, why they are extremely important parts of your machine and why it's something that you don't want to take lightly and something that you want to make sure that you're installing correctly. So the power supplies themselves, when they're modular like this one, um, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera, but there's different connections where they go into. Peripheral and SATA, the ATX, the PCI Express, and the processor connections. Um, Corsair power supplies, they're pretty standard, so you don't have to worry about which one goes where. Uh, they're very well marked and they only fit in in one orientation. Some other manufacturers out there and some other things you may be able to buy or some other cables may not work well on this or they may go in a different plug or something like that. And I have seen it where people have tried to use uh, non-Corsair parts or just something else, plug it into their power supply, and that ends up killing uh, the motherboard, or at least it can, depending on the power that's going out and what's all being contaminated, you could say. That's something that is very important to keep mind of, that if you're doing a fully modular power supply, that you know where everything is being plugged in and you do it correctly. And another thing you have to be careful about when installing cables uh, from the power supply to your computer is going to be which cables go where. And usually, like I said as well, those go in the same spots. You've got the uh, you know 4 plus 4 pin CPU, the 24 pin ATX, and the SATA and the PCI Express. Usually those don't go in interchangeable parts uh, or places or anything. But what I have seen before with some junior technicians and even some places on YouTube is they will plug the uh, PCI Express slot into the um, 4 plus 4 pin CPU because on a single PCI Express strand you have a 6 pin plus 2 pin adapter and that will fit, that 6 plus 2 is 8, so that will also fit in the 8 pin orientation of the, uh, the processor. So that's something that you want to be careful of because that can kill the processor, not, not so much the processor, sorry, it can kill the motherboard um, or it can kill the power supply itself depending on what power is going through it. Usually, if you get a nice, robust power supply, you're not going to run into that problem. And if you're putting it into a nice computer, you're not going to have that problem. And that note brings me to the subject of efficiency ratings and warranty configurations and everything. So uh, typically, the better rated the power supply, the better warranty you're going to have. Um, you go anywhere from bronze power supplies all the way up to titanium power supplies. And usually, titaniums are in the very high end. Uh, platinum is a little bit more common that you'll see on some of the consumer high-end um, power supplies, unless you're going to the, you know, 1500 watts or something like that. Um, and this one here is actually a, uh, you know, it's a gold rated and it has a 10-year warranty to it. You want to make sure that it's going to be very efficient. Um, anything that I do custom builds with, I have a gold minimum. If it's not at least gold minimum, then I'm not going to bother to put it in my equipment because I can't provide any warranties to it and I can't actually say that it's a good uh, power supply to use. And on that note, um, some of the other manufacturers that make really cheap products may give you a one to two year warranty, and that's as well not that good. Uh, because it's not uncommon to keep your power supply for the life of your machine, at least you want to, and sometimes you can even upgrade from uh, one machine to another using the same power supply if it fits your needs and if you've got enough of a uh, warranty along with it you might as well. And the purpose of a, um, a well-efficient power supply and a gold-rated or above power supply is that it is going to be essentially the first line of defense. There's a lot of things you can research uh, in regards to what the efficiency levels mean on their curve and what that really, really means in the grand scheme of things. But on the practical side of things that most people are going to use them for is that when you have faulty power coming through your home, even if you're on a surge protector, you get those brownouts, those surges, those spikes, they can actually go through and damage the, po the power supply or it can jump from the power supply and damage the motherboard itself. Um, I've seen several machines go bad where they've had a surge at the house and say the power supply is okay, but it killed the motherboard because it jumped from the power supply to the motherboard. And sometimes I've seen it where the power supply was taken out, um, but the motherboard itself was okay. And that's something to really keep in mind um, with these, you know, higher efficient power supplies, there is a little bit more of a price, but you're really getting a long-term benefit. And then there's always the question as to how much 
uh, wattage do I need in my power supply? Uh, the one that I uh, talked about in this video is you know a 650 watt that can power two 1080s and SLI and still have room to spare, especially on the Z170 platform, which right now only goes up to a uh, Intel i7 6700K, and that doesn't have that high of a power requirement. Uh, but if you are building on the X99 platform and getting a really robust processor there or an Extreme Edition um, and you want to have some decent graphics cards to boot as well as maxing out all eight slots of, slots of RAM on that guy, uh, you're going to want to build into something a little bit more robust. Usually uh, 1,000 uh, watts is going to be a safe bet because then you just don't have to worry about it because the more strain that you put on the power supply, uh, the more likely you are to have problems when you're reaching that limit. Similar to memory in a computer, you know, yeah, you don't need more than 8 or 16 gigs necessarily, but it's nice to have that buffer room that if for whatever reason you get up to that point, you don't want your system slowing down or crashing because you're all of a sudden out of RAM or out of, um, you know, wattage, if that's the correct term. Out of wattage. Yeah, out of wattage. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope that uh, it made some sort of sense to you. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. And if you want to, go ahead and subscribe to see additional uh, technology videos and everything that I'll be putting out very shortly. And if you have any questions as well, leave them in the comments down below. I love getting the notifications on my phone that I have a comment, and I love responding to those as well. So uh, until next time, remember, the Don's got your back. Uh, of course, you get something in your eye right then. <laughs>